QN operates um, a system a little bit like a vet's. We rely heavily on the public getting animals to us. We don't have a uh, ambulance service as such. Um, so public getting animals to us is our first requirement. We do have a very dedicated band of volunteers who can sometimes arrange to transport animals for people but that's not a guarantee and it will rely on the availability of, of those volunteers who do do that out of their own time and their own petrol money. So these rabbit kits we've got in at the moment, under two weeks old, um, so they are requiring a lot of care and attention. We've been taking them out four times a day to feed. We, we have to toilet them, because obviously that's something um, the parents would do, so it just means um, tapping on their genitals to produce that effect. Um, and then we give them puppy milk and lactaid, which is uh, like a rehydration drink. And we're doing that four times a day at the moment, and they seem to be doing okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Success. Look at that. So hedgehogs are obviously nocturnal so when they're out in the day feeding like this one has been it's just a bit of a worry that they may be blind obviously they can't tell whether it's dark or not. We're going to probably get the vet to come and see him after the weekend and see what's going on but he's putting on lots of weight and quite happy at the moment so we just have to keep our fingers crossed. A feral pigeon came in with a, a dislocated wing, um, so we strapped the wing up. Um, we've now given it a week, so we're just going to feel if if the strap has helped it in any way. So just cover its head, to calm it down a little bit. I think you can actually feel a break. And we've taken the strap off now. Um, unfortunately, we can't see any improvement um, in the wing, so it will probably need to be put to sleep, unfortunately. So we've just had a hedgehog arrive to us. Um, it's got quite an obvious strimmer wound, which is where a strimmer has just gone over, caught its head. It's, it's lost a lot of spines and 
you know, it's in, it's in quite a bad way at the moment, so we'll try and treat it the best we can. So as you can see there, that obviously that's, that's where the injury's taken place. Um, it's healed over, but obviously got infected. So there's a lot of pus, scabbing. Um, so we'll, we'll need to start this on pain relief and antibiotics immediately. Um, so this is something that, that our vet will need to see. Um, and basically what it'll do is remove all the dead tissue and scabbing and then stitch up the remaining um, bits of skin and that'll give it the best chance of, of healing. Head shrimmer wounds are probably one of the most common injuries that we have um, with hedgehogs along with sort of dog attacks and um, being attacked by other animals. First things first, we'll, we'll give the hedgehog medication. Um, this is pain relief and this is antibiotics. Um, so we just go in down at the side, lift the skin up. Obviously we can't stitch it up, that's not something we're able to do, um, but we can just keep it clean. That's sort of the best thing in, in the meantime before the vet sees it. So yeah, you can actually see um, the bits of hedge where it was it was hiding. Um, so that would that would just confirm exactly what's happened to it. And um, this yellowish colour there suggests that it's it's infected, um, and obviously it's got quite a strong smell as well. Actually uncovering the, the wound a bit more and, and trying to clean it revealed that the skull was exposed. Um, that's not something that's going to be able to recover. Um, the wound's just too severe, so unfortunately it did have to be put to sleep. So we have a, uh, a number of fox cubs that came into us at the moment, um, so five fox cubs. When they first came in, they were being fed twi uh, every two hours for over the 24 hours, so people were taking the foxes home. Uh, they, they don't go to the toilet on their own in the, in the den, so mom has to stimulate them to go to the toilet. So we have to do the same. What we have to do with the foxes is we feed them um, canine puppy milk as a replacement, which is lactose free for them. So we have to make that up um, to a ratio of one part milk to two parts water, warm that up to body temperature, and then give it to them with a little bottle and a teat, a bit like you would do with a, a human baby. Um, they were probably somewhere in the region of one week old and unfortunately uh, mom had built the set underneath a shed in a garden in a house that was going to be fully renovated. So we had a call, the builders had removed this shed, started digging over the garden, mom had run away um, and um, the fox cubs were left there on their own. Ordinarily we would try and 
allow the fox cubs to be left overnight in, in a suitable warm environment in that area so that mom could come back and take them back to a subsidiary set that they tend to have ready in case things like this happens. Now unfortunately because of the environment of this, uh, this particular area uh, and because one of the cubs has already died before we attended it was decided that it would be safer and better for the cubs to come back here um, where they would more likely be able to survive. 